Welcome to the Boeing 777 landing gear series. The landing gear system supports the aircraft's weight, absorbs the impact forces, and provides ground steering and brake control. Due to its diverse functions and mechanical complexity, the landing gear is a marvel of modern engineering. To fully comprehend the ingenuity, we will decode its systems one by one, starting with the landing gear brakes. The rudder pedals used to operate the aircraft's rudder also act as brake pedals. Brakes are activated by applying force to the top of the pedals. Pressing down on the pedal operates the pedal bus mechanism. The vertical control rod is connected to the bell crank, which drives the fore-aft control rod. The pedal force is applied against the spring force. When released, the spring returns the pedal to the neutral position. The fore-aft rod movement operates the bus crank assemblies. Each bus crank assembly has a brake pedal quadrant connected to their respective brake control cables. The left control cable operates the left main landing gear brakes, and the right cable operates the right main landing gear brakes. The nose landing gear is not equipped with hydraulic brakes. The transverse control rod connects the left and right bus crank assemblies. This ensures the force applied to any one set of pedals simultaneously operates the other set and activates the left and right main landing gear brakes together. The other end of the control cables are connected to the brake valve quadrants. The valve quadrants operate the brake metering valves. Each main landing gear brake system has two metering valves. The brake pedal input operates both valves at the same time. Before understanding the metering valve functions, we need to understand the hydraulic line connections. The aircraft has three independent hydraulic systems. We will simplify the hydraulic power sources with these symbols. The right system powers the normal brakes of the aircraft, and the center system powers the alternate brakes. When both systems are available, the right system operates the alternate source selector valve. For the selector valve, the center system pressure is the source pressure, and the right system pressure is the control pressure. The right system pressure acting on the larger piston area closes the valve and depressurizes the alternate system lines. The right system pressure charges the brake accumulator. The accumulator has a floating piston and is pre-charged with pressurized nitrogen. The higher right system pressure pushes against the piston and compresses the gas until the system and nitrogen pressure are equal. The right and center system are also connected to the accumulator isolation valve. For this valve, the right system pressure is the source pressure, and the center system pressure is the control pressure. As the control pressure is not available, the valve remains open, and the right system pressure reaches the normal brake metering valves. When the brakes are not applied, the normal system brake lines are connected to the return line of the right hydraulic system. The left and right landing gear brake systems are similar. Therefore, going forward, we will only consider the left gear operation. The metering valve controls the brake pressure in proportion to the brake pedal application. When the pedal is half-pressed, the input shaft moves the metering spool. The initial movement of the spool closes the return line and connects the pressure line to the brakes. As the pressure builds up in the brake line, the metering valve has a feedback chamber that applies an opposite pressure to the metering spool. The spool is forced back to the brake maintained position, where it closes both the return and the pressure line. This is the pressure now available for brake application. The metering spool's return against the input shaft gives a feel force to the pilot. The pedal position has to be maintained to maintain the current brake pressure. To increase the pressure and apply the brakes harder, the pedal has to travel further. This again moves the input shaft and connects the pressure line. The brake pressure and feedback pressure increase. The feedback pressure returns the spool to close both ports and the feel force on the brake pedal increases. The pressure from the metering valve reaches the normal anti-skid module. The anti-skid module transfers the input pressure to six brake lines connected to the anti-skid shuttle valve. The shuttle valve selects the higher pressure for brake application. We will discuss these valves in detail in the anti-skid chapter of the series. For now, let's head to the brakes. There are six wheel and tire assemblies on the main landing gear of the Boeing 777, and each assembly is equipped with multiple disc carbon brakes. The brake assembly is a rotor stator unit mounted on the axle. The inner surface of the wheel has drive keys. 
the brake rotors slide into the drive keys and engage with the wheel. Therefore, as the wheel rotates, the rotors rotate with it. The brake assembly also has an end plate, stators, and a pressure plate. These discs are keyed to the brake assembly and remain stationary. The rotors are stacked between these plates and are driven by the rotating wheel. The brake piston housing has seven self-adjusting pistons. The normal brake system pressure operates the pistons and compresses the return springs. As the pistons extend, they move the pressure plate and compress the stack of rotors and stators against the end plate. The friction created between the discs converts the kinetic energy into heat energy and decelerates the wheel. The normal brake system simultaneously operates the six brake assemblies of both main landing gears. When the brake pedal is released, the springs in the metering valve connects the brake line to the return line of the right hydraulic system. As the pressure is released, the return springs pull the pistons back to relax the brake stack and allow the wheels to rotate freely. Now let's look at the alternate brake system. The alternate brake works when the aircraft's normal brake is unavailable. When the right hydraulic system has no pressure, the brake accumulator will try to pressurize the normal lines. At the same time, the alternate source selector valve will operate as the control pressure is unavailable. This will open the valve and pressurize the alternate system lines. The center system pressure operates the left and right alternate metering valves. It is also the control pressure for the accumulator isolation valve. The valve closes and saves the accumulator pressure for emergency use. The alternate metering valve operates just like the normal metering valve. When the brakes are applied, the valve opens to allow the pressure into the alternate brake lines. The feedback chamber returns the spool to maintain the alternate brake pressure. The pressure is sent to the alternate anti-skid module and then to the shuttle valve. As the normal pressure is unavailable, the shuttle valve will switch to the higher alternate pressure. The center system pressure now operates the main landing gear brakes. In the absence of the normal system, the alternate brake takes over to help stop the aircraft. When the pedals move to neutral, the brake pressure line is connected to the return line of the center system, and the brakes are released. Join us in the next chapter of the series, where we will discuss the anti-skid, parking brake, and piston auto adjustment features. Thanks for watching.